What's up, everybody? Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and uh, it's been an interesting week this past week in USA Hockey. There's been some developments and, and rule changes that have caused quite a bit of buzz in uh, some of the hockey community online. And uh, so if you haven't heard about it, what I'm talking about specifically is the, uh, the modified shorthanded icing rule. Basically, to summarize, it's, it's basically you're not allowed to ice the puck anymore when your team is shorthanded. So if the team ices the puck while shorthanded, it will result in a whistle followed by a defensive zone faceoff. So basically, the rules are the same whether you're shorthanded or five on five. Icing is treated the same now. Uh, and that's going to be in effect for the U14 and unders. So that's U14, U12, and U10. Uh, U8s are playing cross ice if they're going according to USA Hockey. Um, so it doesn't affect them, obviously. And it will take effect at the beginning of this coming season. So 2017, 2018 season. Um, I wanted to quote really quick from their website uh, and what they state here and the, the reasoning behind it. Uh, they say the rationale behind this rule change is twofold. First and most importantly, the change will encourage greater skill development for the 10U, 12U, and 14U players. These young athletes are in their prime skill development windows and will benefit greatly from the increased emphasis this rule change places on promoting puck possession, puck protection, and playmaking, as opposed to merely firing the puck down the ice, which is a low skill tactic. Second, the change prevents a penalized team from gaining an exception to a rule, being icing, that is in effect when teams are at even strength. So that's kind of the rationale behind it. Now, whether you agree or disagree, um, that can be your opinion. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is, uh, you know, it's USA Hockey. They're not going to change their mind, at least not immediately. We're going to have to adjust. We're going to have to adjust this, this rule change. And um, I wanted to point out a few of the key points that I think are going to be things that you're going to want to look at um, on both the power play and the penalty, penalty kill. So things that you're going to want to take a look at, maybe make some adjustments, maybe make some changes, how it's going to affect those things. So where, you know, where's it going to be the kind of the game changers on, on uh, this rule change? So let's go ahead and pull up the rink. And in this video specifically, we're going to be talking about the power play. Uh, and then I'm going to do a second video uh, follow up and, and point out some key points with the PK. So in this video, we're, we're taking the stance as if we're the power play team. Now, in my opinion, uh, this rule change is going to work to the power play team's advantage uh, greatly at least initially until you know teams figure out how to play against this um, but for now it's going to be a big advantage I think to the power play having the PK team not being able to ice the puck um, one thing I wanted to point out is, is most of the things that are important on the power play are still going to be important on the power play um, you know as far as you know having good breakouts getting the setup get you know getting the zone getting the setup getting the shot you know some of the things that I always talk about as far as you know, running an effective power play. Where I think that we wanna put special emphasis though on this rule change is the aggressiveness of the power play forecheck, okay? So I'm, I've always been a proponent of an aggressive forecheck anyways, but I think it's gonna be, I think you're gonna be able to gain that much more of an advantage now because of the fact that that team's not gonna be able to ice the puck. So, you know, if we can get that pressure hard and fast on those, uh, on those PK, those, that penalty kill unit, I think you're going to have a good opportunity to really hem them in their zone because they can't just dump the puck out anymore. Not very easily, at least. Okay. Um, so let's just take a look at this. I've got this set up. You know, you, you may be running an overload. You may be running an umbrella. Um, it could vary depending on your team's age and skill level and everything else. Um, but let's just assume that we've got our power play unit set up like a standard umbrella. And I don't have positions in here uh, because those tend to change on the power play anyways. Like sometimes you're pulling forwards back to D. Um, and usually a lot of, you know, if, if you're really strategizing your power play, you're basing it based off skill sets and, and what hand kids shoot rather than what position they're normally playing. So I've got left-handed and right-handed players here. Uh, but let's just say we've got our umbrella. We get a shot on net. And uh, let's just put a puck. Puck goes into the corner, okay? So puck goes into the corner. Here's what, like, I've already had this philosophy, uh, but we're just going to make it that much more powerful now with, with what I'm going to recommend here, or at least propose to you. And you can kind of take it, anything that we talk about here, take it, look at it, 
and then decide does this apply would this work with my team or is this you know uh you know not the right fit for the kids that i'm working with so let's just say puck goes in the corner okay um you're gonna have one of their one of their pk men go in and and uh try to go get it they're gonna have to start initiating a breakout at this point right so I want to say we're gonna run a 212 but it's gonna be super aggressive okay we're always gonna outnumber the man on the puck Okay, now that's been a standard rule for me for a long time but I'm gonna show you a little bit even more aggressive way of doing this um, so the, the closest two men are gonna go attack the puck now in this case I would say it's probably this right-handed player and this lefty right here okay so they're gonna go down super hard, super fast. We wanna get as much pressure on that player as possible. And the younger the age group, the more this is gonna be effective. So if you're talking U10s, and you're really getting those those uh, those four checkers on their hard, it's gonna be difficult for that team because they don't have a strong shot. Like they're not gonna have a, that ring. You know, the, the U10s generally have a harder time getting a really hard ring around. So they're not gonna have as many options, especially if you get that pressure on their hard and fast. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run like a 2-1-2, okay? But here's how we're gonna run it. This uh, RL, that stands for righty or lefty, it doesn't matter in this case. Uh, he or she's gonna kinda pull over into the middle. And then as this play develops, we can do one of two things. We can either just pull our two D-men back like this, like a standard 2-1-2. Um, but what I like to see is almost like a 2-2-1 where you're gonna have, especially if they're trying to just shovel the puck up the boards really quick, instead of coming over to the boards and then deciding if the, that guy's gonna pinch or not, um, we can just run it almost like this. So they're coming from kind of an umbrella positioning anyways. Depending on how close this, this player is, he may stop there or he may go straight across and then we have one of these guys kind of ready to jump in if they try a middle breakout. But if the player's under a ton of pressure here, which we hope to do, it's most likely gonna be shoveled up the boards, okay? Especially in the early phases of this until teams kind of figure out what they're doing with this. So we're gonna get, we wanna seal off the boards and we wanna potentially seal off the middle as well. And I'm thinking this can come from this guy here. Um, and then this guy's peeling back, okay? Now if it doesn't rotate like that, the other option that I think is probably gonna be more common, depending on how this all materializes, is for this guy to come straight down like this. Okay, and then this guy can pull back like we said, and all almost becomes a 2-2-1. And this player is coming here. Like that. Um, if you don't want to be quite so aggressive off the get-go, you can have it set up like more of a standard 2-1-2 with this guy kind of play in the middle, but then give this player a little bit more free reign to to pinch. Because as you remember, if the puck goes in the corner, their players are moving into breakout position as well right and so there's gonna be you know they're gonna have to attempt a breakout but most of the time especially at the younger age groups that's gonna be coming up the boards so get this guy primed and ready to, to either go straight to that and seal that off with his partner kind of you know backing him up in case it chips past or um, you know I think that's the best option but if this guy's closer or whatever else happens, you know, it, there can be some room for read and react as well. This guy may come over and seal that. And then you've got your other defenseman um, kind of playing that role. But depending on how it materializes, the point is, is get super aggressive on that. And we want to outnumber the puck. So what I'm saying here is, you know, if that puck, as that puck comes up, now we've got, we've got these guys. So this guy's closed in on it. That's the hard pinch and this guy has come over. So we're always outnumbering the player on the puck. And then as that happens, obviously these guys aren't staying in the corner, they're, they're funneling back um, to provide that support. And this guy's coming over in case there's a chip. So uh, I think that that's gonna give, I think it's gonna keep teams on their heels and I think it's gonna hem the PK unit in their own zone if if you get to the point where this four check is run well. And um, you know, it used to not be as big of an issue because as soon as there was a turnover, generally it was iced. So there wasn't as much time for a forecheck to, to materialize. Now that's not an option, so figure out what forecheck, but my my recommendation would be go as, aggress go as aggressive as possible. And uh, I kind of like this, you know, modified 2-1-2 um, that almost becomes, it's like a two, it's it's like a, a cross between a 2-1-2 and a 2-3 press almost, where you get that defenseman really aggressively pinching. And, um, you know, it can work from, from that umbrella, like we said, it works even probably even better from an overload. 
um, cause you're already in that positioning there and, and in a position where you can outnumber the, uh, the puck carrier. So hopefully that helps. Like I always say, that's my two cents worth. And, uh, we're going to be doing another one of these that's that's uh, on the next video. We're going to be talking about some key points for the PK. And that's going to be, there's a, a lot more stuff to talk about there because that's really who this rule is affecting. Um, so power play, keep doing what you're doing. Get really aggressive. Figure out a good four check that's going to outnumber the, the uh, you know, the other team on the puck. And, um, you know, really still focus on those main aspects of, of how to, how to set up a really good power play. And that's, that's get the zone, get the pressure, sorry, get, get the zone, get the setup, get the shot, get the rebound and get back in the setup. That's, that's your key points to having a really good power play, but now incorporate a solid four check in there as well. Um, that the players can jump into that transitional play from, you know, setup to shot to rebound and then jumping on the puck and, and getting, you know, getting that four check in place to get the puck back. That's going to be critical. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a place where we can gain a big advantage over that PK unit. So hopefully that helps. Um, there's plenty more stuff like this at WeissTechHockey.com. So if you're interested in more drills, tactical videos, technical videos, systems videos, stuff like this, strategic stuff, um, we've got tons of stuff at WeissTechHockey.com. Go check it out. And we'll be back again in a couple of days with the PK version of uh you know, what we can expect to see and some, some game changers with this new rule change.